All right, hey everybody, I'm backstage with uh, one of GQ's most influential nerds of 2014. That's the weirdest is that a, title. Is I, that a compliment? It's, it's a real title. I just learned of it today. <laughs> and who, I think they're running out of lists to, to make. <laughs> or maybe there just aren't that many influential. No, you're a very influential Influential person. nerds. Great. Who would have thought that would hmm? ever be a category? Who would have thought that GQ would take that on? But it's so exciting to have you here because you just finished Cosmos. Yeah. yeah, 12 I'm Emmy still nominations. Still recovering. Still recovering. Uh, <laughs> uh, 12 Emmy nominations. Everything it was proposed to be nominated for, it got a nomination for it. Congratulations. So we're all very excited about it. I'm excited about it. I just got caught up on the series. You and were late. He was late. Well, he was in, I was a little after late. After all that PR, I've like, what? never been on time for anything. <laughs> I'm <healed. laughs> Take me back, Neil. Take me back. Uh, no, I was going to say a little bit of a spoiler alert, but everybody should have been caught up by now, because if I've done it, you know, you can. Um, at the end of the series, you leave the helm of the Spaceship of the Imagination. What are you doing leaving the helm? This isn't like an Italian cruise ship. What's it, going to happen? What's, it's because what's it's not my ship. It's our ship. Hmm. It's your ship. Thank you. The viewer. Okay. It's a gift of the production to the viewer so that you can explore the cosmos at your will. Will we see somebody else on TV get into that seat? I mean, Maybe someone you, other than me? May, no second season kind of thing? Preferably there's a you, lot, There's but a lot of talk about second season, yeah. but I don't want to think of it as, oh, we just did a TV series, now let's do next year's season. It's like, give it room to breathe to be digested into our souls of curiosity. The original Cosmos, 34 years ago, they didn't just do another season right after that. That thing was, had an epic scope and mission statement. And when that's how you're making your television, you can't just rattle that off every season. It's, that's, but you that, got people hooked on the science, Neil. I, I know. And we want more of it. You can't just cut us off cold turkey. So but, there's okay. more, there's all more right, so, uh, are, you, are you saying that's all there is to know about ask, the universe? Uh, Ask me again in a year. Okay. Uh, maybe I would have recovered by then. <laughs> maybe I'll be back from the Bahamas by then as I'm trying to uh, <laughs> regain my energy level. That's quite, a, it was quite a, a production effort. All right. 70 locations, seven countries, 13 episodes. You were all over the place. <clears throat> in, in forests, in, in abbeys, in churches, in, in fields at Newton's birthplace. And the funny thing is, this, I never to, I haven't told anybody, uh, uh, two of the locations were green screen. Uh, one of them was Iraq. Just like the moon landing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, one was Iraq. Okay. And the other, believe it or not, was Lower Manhattan. Really? We didn't actually go there. Two places you don't want to be. No, I live in oh. Lower Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been easy for me to cross the Brooklyn Bridge and sure. do the scene. Yeah. Uh, but the setup there and the time, given how many minutes of, mm -hmm. of actual airtime that represented, we just we got good plates of the horizon yeah. of the, the cityscape, and then they just grafted me into the foreground. <laughs> when you were here a year ago, you were just getting ready. Was it ready a year ago? Yeah, well, okay. it was about seven months ago. But this wasn't ago. here. This was not here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The we enterprise were in, was... from a blank wall last exactly. year. Exactly. So I love what you did with the place. Thank yeah, you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, but when you were here last time, you were just gearing up to do the space show at the Hayden Planetarium. Oh, yeah. It's now, How's it going? It's now open. Oh, it's great. Oh, man. Uh, it's dark matter. It's, it's called the dark universe, right. and it's all about dark matter, dark energy, the discovery of it, how much of the universe we have no clue what's going on, and it was audacious because the show is about what we don't know, right? Rather than what we do. This yeah. is the space show at the Hayden Planetarium. That's my day job, when I'm not on TV. I'm See, actually, you're not a no-no. You're talking about what you don't. I know. actually work. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and you're still doing Star Talk Live. Still, Star Talk, Star Talk, and Star Talk Live is oh. when it's in a theater. Right. But otherwise, it's in studio. Yeah, Star Talk is a radio show and podcast uh, where I'm the host. You can and, have and knowledge I, dropped on you by Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> anytime you want. Knowledge Add egg you cracked on your ass. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, no, so the, it's in the it's inverted an inverted model of what a normal science radio show would be. Normally there's a journalist interviewing a scientist, typically. Yeah. But in this case, I'm the host, and I'm the scientist, and my guest is hardly ever a scientist, someone hewn from pop culture. Then we talk about how science has impacted that person's livelihood. I like it. And so it's science as it has manifested in our lives. Now I like stars, and I don't have a and lot of money. And who doesn't? And who doesn't? If I were to buy a telescope to look at stars, 
what would you recommend as somebody who's who's into that sort of thing? Are we talking? Yeah, it's way more complicated than that because it's you're talking it's, Teletron. No, no, no. It's 5, it's, it's how much it's how much money do you have, right. and how big is your backyard? How dark are your skies? Will you be transporting it? Will you not? Are you tech savvy? Are you not? And all of these factors come in, and it's as you answer each one of those questions, the field narrows, and then you land on the right telescope for you. So, and there, do it's you believe like saying, that there is a right telescope for everyone? Yes. Well, yeah, but depending on your needs. Okay. Yeah, yeah, depending on your needs and your budget. Um, but it's like saying, oh, what car should I buy? Well, what do you need? How many kids do you have? What do you, it's those kinds of questions with telescopes. It's, it's what, not are you, a, what are you peeping into these days? Oh, do you know that New York City has the high, I, I read this. I haven't verified it, but I read it. That <laughs> it's got to be true. It's got to be true. Yeah. But I didn't read it on the internet, so that has a higher chance yeah. of it being true. Right. That New York City has the highest per capita ownership of telescopes. Really? Yeah, so what the hell are they looking at? Probably their neighbors. <laughs> yeah, I'm what guessing. heavenly bodies are they accidentally <laughs> poking in on? So uh, on cloudy nights, I make sure my curtains are closed. <laughs> Good call. Because <Good laughs> on a clear night, the, the sky can distract from peeping toms. I understand. Yeah. yeah. It makes sense. Dr. Neil deGrasse Tyson, thank you so much. Thanks for, for having coming me. Coming back to the show. This could be, be an annual thing. Right? I like it. <laughs> we'll keep it up. All right. I'll see you, All right. uh, thank see you. you soon. See you mm -hmm. next year. All right.